么嗨。Kaya tsukihin mo, ipaalala mo, ipaunawa ang iyong puso. Kaya tsukihin mo ang kalooban mo, ang makilala ka, ang nais ko. Ako'y sa iyo, o Panginoon, at ang nais ko'y kalooban mo, walang katulad ang pag-ibig mo, kaya't ang nais ko'y kalooban mo. Hinugis ng iyong kamay Narawan mo sa aking buhay Tanda na iyong pagmamahal Kaya't sabihin mo, ipaalala mo Ipaunawa ang iyong puso Kaya't sabihin mo, ang kalooban mo ang makilala ka, ang nais ko Ako'y sa iyo, o Panginoon At ang nais ko'y ang kalooban mo Walang katulad ang pag-ibig mo Kaya't ang nais ko'y ang kalooban mo Kaya't sa'ng lantas ay ihahayag sa buong buto Kahit sa gantas ay ihahayag sa buong mundo ang pag-ibig mo. Kahit sa gantas ay ihahayag sa buong mundo. Ako'y sa'yo, o Panginoon At ang nais ko'y ang kalooban mo Walang katulad ang pag-ibig mo Kaya't ang nais ko'y ang kalooban mo
Experience. Upon arrival, um, dating namin doon, uh, gabi na kami nakarating. Then after after the dinner, nagkano kami ng orientation. And it was about, ano na, 11, 11pm na natapos yung orientation. And then the next day, start na kagad. in every nation church ng Dabri. We were able to help them in their Sunday service, with their singles event. We preached on their Sunday services and also uh, together with the team, we led the worship. And uh, yeah, we just led every events that they do, usually do. 
on 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 in on Taguri. We were able to go to this uh, focus university nila to reach out, which is the Kasset Sart University. And Kasset Sart University is actually an agricultural university. Paano ba kami nakengage sa mga estudyante doon? Una, um, it was uh, a bit challenging kasi uh, most of them, hindi sila marunong mag-English. Ang um, ginawa namin is that we, nagpakilala kami as tourists, and uh, we asked help from the students to have us a tour, yung tour inside the campus. What I appreciate about the, the locals there is that they are really very hospitable. Uh, they would love to talk to you uh, if you are if you are a foreigner, and they would love to practice their English. One of the effective ways of how to engage the locals are uh, is uh, through English classes. We will meet them, we will we'll have conversation with them, we will eat with them, and after that, we will have our English class in our local center. And we are we we, we are always having a good good time together. They love the fellowship, they love the Filipinos. It's one way to, you know, to, to inch them closer to Jesus by injecting some Christian words and by injecting some Christian values. And somehow we were able to preach the gospel through our English classes. We miss you. As we continue to invest on the mission field, we will know that hindi, hindi man tayo nakakapunta on the mission field, but we know that we were able to send workers on the mission field. And we will see, there will be a time that all nations in this world will be able to hear the gospel of Christ. And if these people will be able to encounter Christ, these people will never be the same again. This nation will be radically transformed by the love of God. And we all know that all nations belong to God, Thailand belongs to Jesus. It was just two weeks of mission trip. Two weeks is enough to really change the person's heart to love the nation of Thailand. So in behalf of Tendi's team of Victory Laguna, we would like to say thank you so much for partnering with us and for sending us to the nation of Thailand. spirit as we worship God today but right now I just want to show you this some of us have decided to gather physically so ayun po sila yeah so again let's take this time to worship God why don't we all stand sa lahat na nandito po ngayon if you are watching online and you are able to stand please stand and enjoy worshiping our King All right. I want to read this verse to you in Hebrews 10, verse 19. It says here, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus. How many of you are confident today to enter the presence of God? Yeah. 
by the new and living way that He opened for us through the curtain that is through His flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Sabi pa dito, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for He who promised is faithful! And let us consider to stir up one another. Alam ko, hindi nyo po pwedeng hawakan yung katabi nyo, pero stir up nyo sila ng medyo malayo. Ganun-ganunan mo lang, kawayan mo lang. Stir up one another in love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as in the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Let's just pray right now, Lord, we enter your presence with confidence as your church Salamat Panginoon for the privilege to gather and I know Lord right now hindi ideal kasi hindi namin mahawakan yung isa't isa ni hindi kami makapagkamayan but seeing each other worshiping together right now Lord manifest your presence in this place and I pray that as we worship you Lord we worship you as one even virtually and physically Lord we lift you up for you deserve it all Hallelujah thank you Jesus Let's worship God right now Pangako at pag-ibig na alay Jesus, ikaw ang daan Tanging katotohanan at buhay oh, Ama, walang katulad Ang pangako at pag-ibig na
pagbabalik sa'yo. Awitin ang iyong katapatan at katapilan. Oh, oh, oh. Tatayang sa tayo na lawak ng iyong pagmamahal. Nulundag sa lalim na kabutihan na Magbabalik sa iyo, Ama. Come on, Church, I'll be denied. Amang walang katulad. Amang walang katulad. Sigaw niyo! Jesus, ikaw ang daan, tanging katotohanan at buhay. Oh, oh. Amang walang katulad, ang pangako at pag-ibig na alay. Jesus, ikaw ang daan, tanging katotohanan at buhay. Amang walang katulad, amang walang katulad. Pangako at pag-ibig na alay Oh, Jesus, ikaw ang daan Tanging katotohanan at buhay Lahat ay magagala
Sen pa, I never walk alone. Church, I will go where you will go. Take the lead and I will follow you to places no one knows. Say the words, I will go. Say this in prayer. the Lord who is in the midst of us, loving us, caring us, protecting for us, defending us, indwelling in us, who died so that we might, we might have the life and have it in super abundance. I, I, just, I just reminded of this verse in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. 
it says, The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by His love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. Let's pray. Can we all just uh, lift up our, our hands as a surrender to God? Lord, ito yung prayer namin, tulad nung kanta kanina. Here we are, Lord. Say the word and we will go. Lead us to the path na gusto mo kaming dalhin. Gamitin mo kami, Lord. Here is our life, Lord. Nakita namin, Lord, yung faithfulness mo dahil sa pandemic na to. Totoo, Lord, na hindi mo kami pinabayaan. You never leave us. Hindi kami mag-isa sa buhay namin na ito. Nandito ka. And Lord, ito kami ngayon. Use our life to tell the world kung gaano yung faithfulness mo sa buhay namin. Kung gaano ka kabuti. Use our life to show your goodness to, to people. Use, use our life. Make Use our mouth to be a mouthpiece of your grace, of your love to other people. Use our hands. Use our feet, O oh Lord. To be your hands to the people around us, Lord. Gamitin mo po kami, Panginoon. Here, we, here are we, Lord. Nadito kami ngayon, Lord. Gamitin mo ang buhay namin bilang patotoo ng kabutihan mo at ng faithfulness mo at ng pag-ibig mo sa mundong ito. Ito ang aming panalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen and Amen. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Yes, iba pa rin talaga no, na makita po kayo face to face. Ang saya po. And we also want to say good morning to, at, to our 225 people worshiping God with us through our live stream. Yan. I'm Carl po, one of the staff here in Victory Calamba. We are Victory. We are a church that exists to honor God and make disciples. Ayan, pwede po tayo umupo muna po pansamantala yan sa ating mga uh, kasama natin na uh, nandito sa ating uh, center ngayon. Yan. So, to, to know more about us as a church, we want to, if you want to visit our website, you may do so at victorycalamba.org And dito po sa Victory, may tinatawag po tayong uh, Victory Groups kasi we do Uh, believe na yung discipleship talaga nangyayari through us to a victory group. Yung victory group po ay ano to, uh, it's a small community, a group of people with same life stage as you. So, sa mga kasama natin ngayon sa live stream natin na hindi pa part ng victory group or first time yung napanood tong live stream na to and na-interest kayo or uh, na-curious kayo kung ano ba yung victory group and gusto nyo maging part, you may visit our website nga katulad kanina, victorycalamba.org slash victorygroup or you can simply uh, comment a smiley sa ating comment box dyan at uh, we will uh, be, message back to you right away after ng message natin. So for our offering message for today, here's Pastor Andre. All right. Good morning, church. Ang sarap sabihin doon nang nakikita mo talaga at nakakasama mo yung church. No? For our giving this morning, I want to read from Matthew 10 verses 41 to 42. And I'm gonna read from the HCSB version. It says here, Anyone who welcomes a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who welcomes a righteous person because he is righteous will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives just a cup of cold water to one of those little ones because he is a disciple, I assure you, he will never lose his reward. Now, dito sa verse na to, one of the principles that we can see is that, you know, as a church or as followers of Jesus Christ, kaya po natin magsuporta at mag-contribute even in the smallest ways. Diba? Nakita natin dito sa verse na to, that even if you give a, a cup of water or in your service or especially dito sa gagawin natin ngayon, in our giving, we can be Uh, we can support and contribute in our own little ways. Okay? Sabi dito, and we will share in the reward of those who are in the front lines of missionary work. And I hope and pray that as we give, every time we give back our tithes and our offering, yun yung lagi nating naalala uh, uh, sa pagbibigay natin ng tithes and offering. So, why don't we just take this time uh, be, uh, to pray for our giving. Lord, thank you 
for the blessings. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that we have received, God. Despite the situations, despite sa mga nangyayari sa buhay namin, Panginoon, truly, true enough, you are blessing us, God, with every kind of blessing that you can give us. Thank you, Lord. Today, we give back, we worship you with our giving. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And for our giving reminders, let us all watch this video. Take note of these reminders as you give. Number one, you may give your tithes through BPI, GCash, or PayMaya. Number two, you can also take part in our COVID relief efforts. After giving, just go to our online giving form and tick COVID relief. Make sure to specify the amount you gave. Take note that this is on top of your tithes and offering. Number three, after giving, make sure to fill out our online giving form or send the details of your giving and a proof of transaction to kalamba at victory.org.ph. This will help us properly acknowledge your giving. Number four, if you need help, you may contact our finance admin. Once again, thank you for your generosity. So, the joke na In light of the community quarantine, uh, we encourage everyone to give online for your safety through victorycalamba.org slash give. So for those of you who are watching uh, at home, if you can't give online, we can make an arrangement for you. Contact nyo lang kami uh, through the number being flashed on your screen sa inyong homes, no? And we would get in touch with you, okay? And also, you may also drop off your cash and checks dito sa center natin from Tuesdays to Sundays, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Victory Calamba. For those of you who are joining us here today, you may do that as well, okay? You can drop off your giving sa ating... Uh, Offering box later after the service. So uh, once again, everyone, thank you for your generosity. Okay, thank you for being part of what we are doing here in our movement. And for our message today, let us all watch this video. Okay, good morning everyone. Ay, grabe. Ibang klase talaga kapag ka nagkikita face to face. Ganito talaga yung design ng church kapag ka magkakasama. Feel nyo ba yun kanina nung nag-worship tayo? Diba? How many of you kapag ka nasa bahay, ganun yung pakiramdam ng worship? Yung word, medyo ganun din. Kasi, di ba, papakinggan mo lang din naman. Pero yung worship, iba talaga. So, sa mga, sa mga nagbihis po, gumising ng maaga, at nag-face mask at nag-face shield, na kung wala kayong dalang face shield, meron pong bibigay sa inyo. Yan, uh, maraming maraming salamat po. Palakpakan naman po natin sila ng mga nandito. And sa mga nanonood po ngayon sa ating Facebook Live, huwag po kayong mag-alala, hindi po ibig sabihin kapag ka nagpunta dito, mas special o mas anointed. Hindi po ganun. Mas at risk, ganun lang. <laughs> so, ano po talaga, ah, uh, uh, kasama po namin kayo dito and whether you are with us physically or virtually, thank you so much for being with us sa ating Sunday service. Welcome to Victory. Palakpakan naman po natin lahat. Yan, dinig nila yung palakpak ninyo. Yeah, I think we have 200 plus viewers right now. So again, welcome 224. 42. Yon, nakuha ko. Ano, may ganun-ganun ko. Ano man yun? English, one word, four word, parang ganun. So, right now, uh, by the way, my name is Jared and I'm one of the pastors here in Victory Calamba. And right now, we are ending our mini-series entitled The Mission Continues. This is our annual missions series kung saan binabalikan po natin yung, yung calling po na ating simbahan. Not just Victory Calamba, but not just Victory Philippines, but every nation as a whole. Tayo po ay hindi lang po isang church dito sa Kalamba. We are part of uh, Victory Philippines, yung Every Nation Philippines. And yung Every Nation Philippines is of course part of the of a global movement called Every Nation. 
this is our attempt to somehow draw us back dun sa kung saan nga ba yung calling natin, kung ano yung tawag sa atin ng Panginoon. And since we are on a book study of Romans, nag-Romans na rin po tayo, hindi na po tayo lumayo. But right now, we are reading towards the end of the book where si Apostle Paul, he summarizes his calling. Titingnan po natin yung calling ni Apostle Paul, titingnan natin kung ano yung pwede nating matutunan sa calling ni Apostle Paul, tapos titingnan din natin yung ating calling at paano ba natin to mafulfill. Kasi the thing about Apostle Paul is the clarity of his calling propelled him to fulfill his purpose. Hindi po ito gumagana, so si yung tech na lang po yung bahala sumunod. The clarity of calling, of his calling propelled him to fulfill his purpose. And this is what we want to focus or to zero in our calling so that we will be able to fulfill it. Di ba, nakakatuwa yung kapag ka dumating na yung Panginoon, pag bumalik na siya dito sa mundo, sasalubungin natin siya, tapos sasabihin niya sa atin, well done my faithful servant, hindi lang dahil save tayo kay Jesus, pero dahil talagang nagawa natin. Di ba, nakakatuwa yung kapag ka pauwi na tayo sa Kanya kung hindi man natin abutan yung pagbabalik ng Panginoon. No? Kung pauwi na tayo sa Kanya, yung kaya mo sabihin, I have done, I have, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my race. Yung ganong level ng confidence and that is what we want. That is why meron po tayong ganito, series kung saan we are looking at the clarity of our calling. And who knows, maybe for some of you, kapag ka na natin yung mga principles dito, pagdating sa calling ni Apostle Paul, yung specific calling mo personally, magkaroon din ng linaw. For some of you, God called you to serve in the government. For some of you, God called you to, to serve at showbiz. Sino dito yung katabi mo, mukhang showbiz? Di alata, pastor, kasi nakamask. Yeah, ito, noo pa lang, pwede na, di ba? Yung buhok pa lang, pwede na. Di ba, I- God has a purpose for you. Let me be clear with that. And you you knowing that, you being clear with that purpose, somehow will propel you to fulfill that purpose. And yun po yung gusto natin. So if you have your Bibles with you, we will read today in Romans 15, 14 to 21. Please, can everyone please stand in reverence to the reading of the Word of God. We will read from Romans 15, verse 14 to 21. It says here, Sabi dito, I myself am satisfied about you, my brothers, that you yourself are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able to instruct one another. But on some points, I have written to you very boldly by the way of reminder, because of the grace given me by God to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus then, I have reason to be proud of my work for God, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and all the way around to Illyricum, I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ. And thus, I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation. But as it is written, those who have never been told of him will see, and those who have never heard will understand. Why don't we take this time to pray for a moment? Father, we thank you today for the privilege to gather as a church. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, for your faithfulness. Thank you for protecting everyone na nandito ngayon. Thank you for protecting everyone na nanonood ngayon. And Lord, I may not know kung ano po yung pinagdadaanan exactly ng bawat isa, but right now, Lord, we want to focus on you. Mangusap ka sa amin, Panginoon. Make us understand and so that we can live out our calling as a church. And would you somehow give us a picture of your calling to us personally? Lord, we want to be clear in our calling just like the Apostle Paul. Excited po kami sa gagawin mo po. Lalo na ngayon, we are entering into the post-pandemic. Slowly, bumabalik na po yung buhay namin dati. Or actually, hindi kami pabalik dun sa dati. We are excited on what you will do. The endless possibilities, the opportunities 
in the middle of the opposition. And right now, God, I pray that you would help us. Help us discern your word, understand your word. Holy Spirit, anoint the preaching of your word today. Salamat po, Panginoon, for your grace in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Yan, makakaupo na po tayong lahat. As we end, yung, as we look at the end of Romans, hindi pa po natin tatapusin yung Romans. Next week po, titingnan natin yung chapter 12, kung saan ia-apply po natin lahat ng natutunan natin sa kung ano nga ba yung gospel, sa kung paano siya magta-translate sa buhay natin. Pero dun sa section na binasa natin, ito po yung towards the end na patapos na si Apostle Paul dun sa Roman. Tapos, somehow, sinamarize niya yung kanyang calling. Tapos dito, there are so many things that we can highlight dito sa verse na to. But we will choose to highlight today, etong verses na to. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Tingnan niya mga nakalagay dyan. Sabi dyan, grace given me by God. My offering, my work for God. What Christ has accomplished through me. I have fulfilled my ministry. My ambition. When you look at those words, parang hindi mo ilalagay yan sa isang minister. Di ba? Parang, how many of you know, nakapag ka narinig mo yung mga, yung mga pastor mo, ito ang aking ambition. So parang, ha? Ambition mo? Di ba kay Lord yan? But we have to understand kung saan nagagaling si Apostle Paul dito. In fact, what we want today is to understand the nature of the calling of God in his life and kung paano nagta-translate yun sa buhay niya so that pagdating sa atin, we can confidently say that by the grace given us by God, yung ginagawa natin is our offering, yung work natin is for God, and what you titignan natin, magnify natin si Lord in what Christ will accomplish through us, and we can say that we will fall Feel the ministry and this is our ambition. Gusto natin magkaroon ng ganun, classing confidence. Sobrang na-admire ko si Paul dito na nabasa ko to kasi it seems like Paul is so clear about his calling. And kung isusummarize natin yung calling, yung very specific calling ni Apostle Paul, sino dito? You can summarize yung very specific calling sa ni Lord in a short sentence. Yung know, parang para ito yung ano eh, uh, parang hinahabol-habol lagi ito, purpose calling. Pero si Apostle Paul, alam na alam niya, in verse 15 sabi dito, But on some points, I have written to you very boldly by way of reminder because of the grace given me by God to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles. If you are going to summarize the calling of Apostle Paul based on him to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, yung calling po ni Paul, Paul's calling, is una-una, to be a minister of Christ Jesus. Ano ibig sabihin na to be a minister of Christ Jesus? When you look at verse 18, this is not flash there, sabi doon, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what, what Christ has accomplished through me. Kung baga, sabi ni Apostle Paul, hindi ako magpipreach ng kahit ano except dun sa ginawa ni Kristo sa buhay ko. And I want to tell you this today. We will not venture in speaking about anything other than what Christ is doing and what He has done for us. Every week, ang maririnig mong pinipreach natin dito is Jesus and the Gospel. Hindi tayo magpipreach dito nang bigla magiging motivational speaking to na parang TED Talks na. No, we're not gonna do that. Wala po tayo iba, we will not venture, we would not dare preach about anyone else, we will preach about Jesus. Amen? After all, this is the only thing that can change us. Yun lang yung power na kayang baguhin yung buhay natin. Yun lang ginawa ng Panginoong Jesus para sa atin. Yung to be a minister of Christ Jesus na yan, ibig sabihin na to preach the gospel. To preach and demonstrate the gospel, preach Ibig sabihin, you preach grace through faith that leads to obedience. Yung grace through faith na pinipreach po natin, hindi lang yan naiiwan na lang sa grace through faith. Naaabusuhin mo yung grace kasi grabe nga naman yung grace ng Panginoon. No, it leads to obedience. Sabi dun sa Great Commission, go and make disciples of all nations and, uh, and baptize, I will baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you, meron talagang element ng obedience. 
Kasi if you want to look at your life, tapos i-evaluate mo kung nag-grow ka ba as a disciple, nag increase ba yung obedience mo kay God. So gusto natin yun to preach that, yung totality ng gospel, but not just preach, we also want to demonstrate. Kaya sabi ni Apostle Paul, by word and deed. Ayaw natin na puro salita lang tayo. Ako, live pala to, no? Ayaw natin na sasabihin lang natin, eto Jesus, Jesus, pero sa buhay natin hindi kita. The way we post on social media, hindi naman kita. Eh, yung social media, ano pa yan? Pinipili mo pa yan. Paano yung sa buhay mo? Yung talagang natural lang. Paano kapag wala nang nakatingin? Gusto natin yung minister of Christ Jesus to preach and demonstrate the gospel. Yun yung ibig sabihin nun. Now, yung kay Apostle Paul, specifically to the Gentiles, o pag yung ibang version ng Bible, yung binasa mo, nakalagay ito to non-Jews. So, sino dito yung non-Jews? Yan, tingnan mo yung katabi mo, mukha bang Jew yan, juice yan, yung apple juice, guyabano juice. Di ba? Non-Jews, yun yung, yun yung ministry ni Apostle Paul. If you are going to summarize yung kanyang calling, that's it. Pag nakita mo, from general to specific. General to be a minister of the of Christ Jesus. Specific to the Gentiles. Now, I want you to understand that itong specific to the Gentiles, hindi ito assignment ng lahat. Si Peter, the Apostle Peter was called to minister to the Jews. Si Paul sa Gentiles. Si Apollos, iba rin yung nature ng calling niya. Si Apollos, teaching to. Si Apostle Paul, ang calling niya talaga, plant churches, establish churches, preach the gospel, yun talaga, to the Gentiles. Now, hindi rin ito yung specific calling ni Apostle Paul simula nung simula. Now, yung naging kristyano pa lang siya, alam na niya. So, if you're here, hindi mo pa alam yung specific, it's okay. May process si Lord John. Noong una, makikita mo, sa life ni Apostle Paul, nagpipreach siya, he spent much of his time preaching to the, to the Jews in the synagogues. So, nung time na yun, siguro hindi pa clear, di ba tumatagal nagiging clear, ay, called ako ni Lord to the Gentiles. Para siyang funnel na from broad to specific, habang tumatagal, habang lumalalim ka sa Panginoon, doon mo nalalaman yung calling mo, ganun yung nangyari kay Apostle Paul. And this, not, this does not mean na si Apostle Paul hindi siya magpipreach sa Jews. Take note yung Romans, ang context po nito, ang kausap niya, both Jews and Gentiles. So when we talk about our specific calling today, this does not mean na hindi natin i-reach out yung iba pa. No, ay, pipili tayo, ay, hindi yan ganyan. No, we're not gonna do that. Ang point lang nito is we will focus on our calling so that we will be able to fulfill it just like sa kung paano sinabi ni Apostle Paul. He was crystal clear about his calling and because he is clear about his calling, number one, he was able to focus. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, focus. Sa mga nanonood po ngayon, sabi mo dun sa katabi mong pusa, yeah, focus. Miao. Yeah, I want to read this verse again, this time in the message translation. Sabi dito, I'm simply underlining how very much I need your help in carrying out this highly focused assignment. I like that term. Highly focused assignment God gave me. This priestly and the gospel work of serving the spiritual needs of non-Jewish outsiders so that they can be presented as an acceptable offering to God, made whole and holy by God's Holy Spirit. Diniscribe po ni Apostle Paul yung kanyang calling as highly focused assignment. Speaking of highly focused assignment, nisip ko, ano ba magandang example ng highly focused assignment that I was reminded of this guy? Si Dennis Rodman. Yan, so since pa-finals na rin naman, Finals na ng NBA, di ba? Yan, let us not forget kung sino talaga yung greatest team of all time. And that's Chicago Bulls nung 95 to <laughs> alam naman natin yan. So, nililinaw ko lang. Now, si Dennis Rodman, I was reminded of him nung naalala ko yung highly focused assignment kasi si Dennis Rodman sabi, Dennis the Worm Rodman considered as one of the best rebounder of modern time. 
So pagkatining na natin, parang lahat nagkakagulo sa pag-shoot ng bola, si Dennis Rodman, ang kanyang goal o kanyang highly focused assignment is to rebound. Tapos, if Dennis Rodman is known for anything beyond his off-court antics and eccentric style, it is his extraordinary rebounding ability. He was able to achieve that. Yung known siya for rebound because he was highly focused on his assignment. Legendary yung pagka-focus niya. Sabi nun sa ilang articles and documentary, in fact, hindi ko alam kung nasa last dance to. May episode na nakafocus kay Dennis Rodman. Na si Dennis Rodman, 3, 4 a.m., ang ginagawa niya, dinadrag niya yung teammates niya, mag-practice kayo ng shooting. Tapos si Dennis Rodman, nakaupo, aabangan niya. Kinakalculate na niya, sinasanay niya yung sarili niya sa trajectory ng bola na pagtama ng ganun. Alam na niya kung sa tatalbog para ma-rebound niya. 3, 4 a.m., ganun yung practice niya. 3 to 4, minsan naabot ng alas 5, imagine mo, tas mga teammates niya, oh, shoot mo yung bola. Hindi nag-shoot. Ang ginagawa lang niya, rebound, rebound, rebound. Kasi yun yung kanyang focus assignment. And because of that, he was able to accomplish that one of the greatest rebounders of all time. Now, I'm telling you this. Not everything, hindi po lahat ng bagay kaya natin gawin. Tama ba? Now, you imagine if we are going to focus on our highly focused assignment. Kung alam natin yung ating highly focused assignment, what can we do with that, diba? In order to focus in doing our highly focused assignment, we have to know what God has called us to do. So tayo po, if you are from Victory, and I'm, I think wala namang first time dito sa place na to ngayon. Kasi may registration to, tama ba? Do we have any first timers here? Welcome po. Pero diba, wala. Kasi you are all from Victory. Taas mo kami mo kung Victory ka lang ba is your home church. Yan, taas mo. Yan, yan, yan. Kaya ka nandito ngayon. Kaya mo nilaban yan. Kasi nga, ito yung home church mo. So I want you to know about our calling to be a minister of Christ Jesus. Yan yung general. Lahat po tayo called dyan. Same with the Apostle Paul. Ibig sabihin, preach the gospel. Kaya nga, every Sunday, pinipreach natin yung gospel. Kaya nga, pinipreach natin yung gospel by doing engage. Kaya pumupunta tayo even to the next city, nagla-love the city tayo, dahil pinipreach natin yung gospel. Kahapon, o oh, ba kahapon yun, Mark? Nasa si Mark? Nagkaroon tayo ng tricycare. Because we care. Di ba? Andun lang po yun sa baba. They share the gospel to 35 tricycle drivers and they all receive Jesus. Pinakain nila, tapos ano, nag-preach sila ng gospel doon, in-encourage nila, tapos more than that, may kasama ng dalawang victory group leader. Si Paul, tama ba? Tsaka si Silas. Ay, iba pala. Si Paul, tsaka si Dodi. Ayun, nandito sila ngayon. Imagine nyo, nasa luna nila agad. Bakit kaila? Imagine nyo ha, tricycle drivers. Yung tricycle drivers, sumaharap yan sa mga tao. Ibig sabihin, medyo exposed. Sila, they, they risk that kasi they understood that they are called, we are called to be minister of Christ Jesus to preach and demonstrate the gospel. Pinapakinggan ko yung kwento, si Mark nagpipreach pag malaki yung crowd. Kasi, ano yan, di ba? Di ba? Ako ay may alaga... Puso ang mataba. Eh, siguro ganun magsalita si Mark. Ibang klase pagka nag-preach si Mark. Pero si Dodi at saka si Paul, nag-preach sila kapag ka yung ano lang, yung, yung small group and mas effective. Nadala nila sa small group. And we are doing that. In fact, we're gonna do that next week sa Kabuya ulit sa mga teachers naman. Why do we keep on doing that? Now here's the thing. Again, I, I am not boasting. Makikita nyo mamaya, Apostle Paul's boasting. But I'm saying that kasi that is what Christ is doing in and through us. And you are part of that. Parti ka nun. Every prayer, every time that you will give, every time that you will make a stand and not be afraid dito sa nangyayari sa paligid natin. Preaching and demonstrating the gospel, you are advancing the kingdom of God here in Kalamba. This is our calling, general. Now, let's take it to the specific as a church. Ano ba yung calling natin, every nation? Unang-una, to reach 
future leaders. That is why we have campus ministry. Kung si Apostle Paul called to reach the Gentiles, tayo po sa victory and sa every nation, we are called to reach future leaders. That does not mean that we are not gonna reach yung iba. After all, yung example nga na binigay ko sa inyo, di ba? People group, nire-reach natin. Pero ito yung ating focus, campus ministry. That is why we have campus missionaries. That is why we value so much the next generation. That is why meron tayong series about next generation kasi we're reaching the future leaders. Kasi imagine, if you reach the future leaders, you are securing the future. Amen? Sino dito kids church volunteers? Come on, gumanon na. Come on. Umubo ba yun? Oo, nag Di ba? What you are doing is you are investing in the next generation. Sino dito yung magulang pinapapunta niyo yung, yung mga anak niyo sa kids church online? Kahit ayaw mo sanang may screen time, pero pinapapanood mo, tas ikaw, nag-YouTube ka, tinitigil mo muna, parang ito na naman, kids church online, wala na nga. You are investing in the next generation. Ito po yung focus natin to reach future leaders. Another thing is to plant churches. Now, let me be clear. We, ang, ang goal po natin is to plant churches that will eventually be strong enough to plant another church. Hindi po tayo nandito para mag-extend lang na another branch. That is the last thing that we want. Ang laki-laki na lugar natin dito, maglalagay pa tayo na ibang location. That is not the point. Ang kaya natin ginagawa yun kasi we want to plant churches kasi that the only sustainable way na ma- masasalo natin lahat na madidisciple natin. That is the most effective way of evangelism. Pag nag-evangelize ka, tapos tumanggap sila kay Jesus, ano na yung next nun? You invite them to church. Kaya nagpa-plant tayo ng church. And next year, ipa-plant natin yung kabuya, magkakaroon po tayo ng church doon. Amen. And nangyayari na siya ngayon. Yung effort kahit pandemic. Kaya nga, ano eh, iba kapag ka nakapokus ka sa calling mo, di ba? Kasi, oh, pandemic ngayon, magpa-plant ba tayo ng church? Eh, bakit hindi? Ito yung focus natin. Eh, ano naman kung pandemic? Tapos we think of creative ways para i-gather yung mga tao doon kahit virtually. Kasi nga, this is our call. So if you are part of our Kabuyao Church planting, taas mo yung kamay mo. Yan. Taas mo, taas mo yan. Palakpakan naman po natin sila. Yan. And finally, finally, specific calling natin, every nation, is to reach future leaders, plant churches in every nation. Every nation. That is why we will not stop dito sa Kalamba lang. Parang iba nagtatanong, eh pastor, ang dami dami pang tao dito sa Kalamba at gusto na natin makibang bansa? Oo. Kasi call tayo to preach, to reach future leaders, to plant churches in every nation. That is why right na even pandemic, nagtitrain tayo ng mga possible missionaries. Pinagpe-pray nila yan. Minimit natin sila. We're praying for that. Na-cancel ang lahat ng 10 days ngayon. Pero dapat ngayong mga oras na to, nasa South Korea kami nagpe-preach ng gospel. At saka naggaganon. Di ba? We're doing that because this is our call. And you know what? Knowing our calling as a church. Kapag alam natin yung calling natin as a church, this shapes our philosophy of ministry. What do I mean by that? Si Apostle Paul, when you look at the way he thinks, the way he writes, makikita mo na yung calling niyang yun, it shapes yung philosophy ng ministry niya. Ganon din po tayo. Bakit yung mga pastor mas young, younger looking, di ba? Oo, baby face. Nox, parang hindi kayo naniniwala doon. Di ba? Bakit pinapapreach natin yung mga yung mga, si Miko, matanda na yan. Si Alex, bata, di ba? Bakit ganon? It shapes our philosophy of ministry. Bakit ganito ang design ng center? Oh, eh kasi, para maganda. That is not the point. It shapes our philosophy of ministry. And hindi lang, hindi lang shapes our philosophy of ministry, it allows us to say no to good opportunities. You know what? We... Especially last year or before the pandemic, 
I have been presented with so much good opportunities that we had to say no because it is not our call. And because of that focus, that focus on our highly focused assignment, kaya natin mag-say no. Kahit para, uy, grabe, ba't tayo nag-no doon? We're saying no to that in order to say yes to what God has called us to do. And finally, it makes our decisions easier. Bakit mag, magpa-plant pa tayo o hindi? Ah, bakit hindi? E pandemic, e bakit naman? E naman? Makes our decisions easier. Now, just a side note, it take me on personally. If you know your call personally, di ba, it would shape your life, the way you do your life. It would allow you to say no to good opportunities. Sino sa inyo, naranasan mo na mapatanong, Pastor, oo, oo ba ako dito o hindi? Anong calling mo? And it would make your decision easier. But let me tell you this, you can only find your specific call in the context of community. Kasi pwedeng nang iniisip mo lang, ay, ito calling ko, ito calling ko, pero it will only be validated, strengthened even, in the context of community. Kaya napakahalaga po nito. It's community. Amen? Going back again to Paul's calling, because Paul was clear in his calling, he was able to finish. Natapos ni Apostle Paul, yung kanyang calling. In verse 19, it says here, By the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and all the way around to Illyricum, I have fulfilled. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, fulfilled. I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ. Ang galing, no? I look forward to that day. Alam mo yun, yung magre-retire na as minister, tas we have fulfilled our calling do sa generation na yun. Nax! Diba yung power nun? I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ. You see, because of Paul's relentless pursuit of his purpose, his focus on his assignment, and by the power of the Spirit of God, he has fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of God. He was able to do what God had called him to do. Now, let me be clear. By fulfilling the ministry of the gospel of Christ, Paul doesn't mean that he preached in every village, in every city, in those region. Hindi yun yung ibig sabihin ni Apostle Paul. Hindi ibig sabihin ni Apostle Paul na lahat ng tao, mga around 1 million yung nandun sa Rome, Rome pa lang yun, di ba? Hindi ibig sabihin ni Apostle Paul na lahat ng tao, ay kinausap ko yan, kinausap ko yan, tapos lahat na nakakasalubong niya, oy, pre, oy, si, si, ni, hindi lahat ganun. Ang ibig sabihin ni Apostle Paul dito, is he planted strategic churches in those areas so that from them the gospel could go out into the surrounding areas. For example, in Acts 19.10, si Paul spent two years teaching the disciples in Ephesus and as a result, all who lived in Asia heard the gospel. Now, our mindset, I want to tell you, ito, zero in natin, pabalik sa atin, is to preach the gospel where Christ was not known. Ito mismo yung sinabi ni Apostle Paul, relate tayo dito. Ang calling na our mindset natin, ipipreach natin yung gospel kung saan hindi pa kilala si Jesus. Uh, I don't know if you heard this already, hindi ko na alam kung sino original nagsabi nito. Pero yung, narinig nyo na ba yung lagi natin sinasabi ni, as long as there is one lost person who needs to hear about Jesus, we are not big enough. And we're not going to stop. Hindi tayo titigil na pag-preach, pag-demonstrate, pag-plan ng churches, pag-send ng missionaries. Hanggat humihi niya. Now, but this does not mean that we will randomly scatter effort. Now, di mag-LTC tayo dito. LTC na sa lahat. Hindi ganun yung gagawin natin. O, gawin natin to engage dito, engage, engage. We won't do that. Just like the Apostle Paul. What he did was he strategically planted churches. We have a strategy, and I want to share this to you. Our strategy is to de- make disciples and develop leaders. Make disciples, one disciples at a time, it works. Pagka inisip mo, a 500,000 sa kalamba, e at bukay yung 300,000 sa kabuyaw, paano natin gagawin yun? 
Eh, hindi naman natin gagawin yon. Ang gagawin lang natin, one disciple at a time. Pag nag-make ka ng disciple, tuturuan mo na mag-make din ng disciple, tas ganun din gagawin niya, parami ng parami, hanggang ma-disciple natin yung buong city and eventually yung buong nation. We develop leaders. Bakit tayo nagre-raise ng leaders? We do not raise leaders for the sake na para dumami lang yung victory group leaders. Every principle, as in every principle and values na itinuturo sa lahat ng leader na nandito, kaya ganun kadami yung meeting ninyo, is so that you can apply it leading in the real world. Not that yung ginagawa natin, hindi real world, pero you know what I mean. So you can apply it sa secular world, sa trabaho mo, lahat. Ba, integrity, excellence, yung itinuturo sa atin, lahat yan, pwede mong i-apply. Kahit nga engage, establish, equip, empower, you will be surprised sa kung paano natin pwede i-apply yun sa buhay natin. And also to reach future leaders. Kaya nag invest tayo kasi hindi mo alam kung sino sa mga chikiting natin ngayon yung next Vico Soto. Hindi mo alam kung sino sa mga dinidisciple natin ngayon yung magiging isa sa mga counselor dito sa city natin. Hindi mo alam that maybe darating yung time that Victory Calamba will go by the thousand but that's not the point. Pero makakapag-disciple tayo ng someone na pwede nating diba, ipag na tumakbo sa isang government position dito sa city natin. We do not know. And we're investing, we're trusting God. We realize na yung ginagawa natin is a mere part of what God is doing. And lastly, we plant churches in strategic places. Nalala niyo yung series natin na Metro? Bakit ang victory hindi lapit sa campuses kasi nga future leaders. Di ba? Focus para ma-finish yung call. And here's the thing, though we may not see it in our generation, this is the baton that we are passing to the next. Though we feel like our efforts are small, we believe in God's work. All of this, after all, is His work. Our ministry is only a part of kung ano yung ginagawa ni Lord in the big picture. We are not pressured. We are passionate because at the end of the day, we know God wins. Amen? And lastly, number three, because Paul was clear in his calling, he was fulfilled. Romans 15, 17, In Christ Jesus then, I have reason to be proud. So yung sa katabi mo, proud. I have reason to be proud of my works. Si Paul, proud. Yabang naman ito. He was proud. And when you look at the original language, yung proud na yun, na ibig sabihin niya, boasting. So walang result. Yabang talaga. Boasting, which can either magnify the achievements of self, o yun yung negative meaning niya, or it can magnify God's grace. And yun yung ibig sabihin ni Apostle Paul. Kaya nga sabi niya, in Christ Jesus. He wrote something similar in Galatians 6.14. Sabi niya, But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. You see, church, he was not boasting for boasting's sake. Sinasabi niya to because he was fulfilled. Christ has done so much through him and he recognized that the only way he could have done that is by God's grace. I want to tell you this as I close. In the same way, we were fulfilled. Hindi po tayo pressured na, ay, dami pang hindi nakakilala kay Lord. We are passionate, but we're not pressured. We're privileged to do what God has called us to do. We look at uh, God's calling sa atin, hindi, dahil si Lord, ano ba yan? Kumilos ko, that is not the point. Hindi ganun si God. But every time we will preach the gospel, every time we will demonstrate the gospel, every time we will do what God has called us to do, we consider it a privilege. You see, us gathering today, this is a privilege. Ngayon, naranasan natin yung hindi tayo nakakapag-gather dahil sa pandemic. But did you know that there are 
brothers and sisters natin sa ibang nation na hindi sila nakakapag-gather hindi lang dahil sa pandemic pero dahil sa persecution. Pero they fight for it. They do everything that they can. Some are worshiping in caves. So kapag ka nagpipreach yung pastor nila, ganito yung sound, 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 sound. Taas kami sila sa cave, walang aircon, aircon. Venue nagpapalit every week. We hear so many stories and because we are live right now, I cannot tell you everything. Kasi yung iba, nasa restricted nation. Some are being monitored by the police. Yun yung pinagdadaanan nila, but they fight for it. Why? Because they understood that this is our calling. So, Victory Kalamba, I want to encourage you right now. Consider this a privilege. We live in a nation that we are not persecuted in our faith. And this is not an excuse for us na para, eh di na lang, okay na pala tayo. No, no, he, alam mo yung, ano, yung, yung balance ng contento tayo at thankful tayo sa pinagdadaanan natin. But at the same time, hindi tayo contento kasi alam natin kailangan pa natin i-push yung kingdom ni God further. Kasi look around our nation. This needs more righteousness. Amen. Kailangan natin i-preach yung gospel so that one person at a time mababago yung buhay nila sa pamamagitan ng kapangyarihan ng Panginoon. And that eventually we will see our families change. Sino sa inyo, alam nyo, nung binago ka ng Panginoon, naapektuhan ang pamilya mo? Sino sa inyo, nagulat pa yung pamilya mo nung nagbago ka? Hindi makapaniwala. Sino to? <laughs> Sino sa inyo, kakain kayo, tapos biglang pakain na sila, teka, pray muna tayo. Tapos sinaserve mo pa, tapos nakaganan sila sa iyo. Sino to? Tapos eventually, nabago din sila. Sino dito yung nadala nyo na yung pamilya nyo sa church? Nasheran nyo na ng gospel yung pamilya nyo. Tapos nagkaroon ng change dun sa family. Now imagine that happening large scale. Ganun yung effect nito. Dahan-dahan pero sigurado yung pagbabago. Now I, I know it's kind of odd talking about our mission during times of pandemic. A season where we are in need as well. But I believe that this is the best time to remind us of who we are. In a season where everything is changing so fast, we have to be reminded of what should remain. You see, our strategy, our timing, our styles may change. Maybe at halt. But the mission continues. The mission continues. And we all know, honor God, make disciples, but this is the expanded version of, of our mission. We exist to honor God by establishing Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, social responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation church. Victory Kalamba, this is our highly focused assignment. Kahit hindi tayo umiscore sa bola, Kung magawa natin to okay na. And we're not gonna stop. May we not allow ourselves to be taken out of focus. Until the gospel has gone out to all people, we will pray, we will give, and we will go. And until our Lord and Savior returns, we will continue to honor God and make disciples. Let us all pray right now. Can we stand yung mga nandito? Yan. Father, we thank you right now for the privilege of doing what you have called us to do. Thank you that we live in a nation that we are not persecuted in our faith. Father, we repent of those times that we, we take this for granted. Na instead of being passionate, na contento na lang kami, Lord, right now, we recognize that you are here. And in the presence of each other, Lord, we are encouraged. Nakita pa lang namin isa't isa. Thank you for this. Thank you for this opportunity to gather. And right now, Lord, we rededicate. We acknowledge 
yung specific calling that you have in our church. And Lord, I pray that this specific calling that you have in our church will eventually shape our specific calling personally. Lord, here we are. Use us, God. Can we lift our hands to God right now? Lord, as we dedicate, as recognizing na part kami nitong mission na ginagawa mo, as recognizing that this is our highly focused assignment, may we find our personal calling in the midst of all this. Lord, would you not, I pray, Lord, that you would not allow us to be distracted by so many good opportunities to the point na madadrop na namin kung anong tinawag mo na gawin namin. Lord, as we lift up our hands right now, may we acknowledge this call. We receive it. And at the same time, God, I pray that you will work in our hearts, continue to reveal yourself to us, so that even our specific calling, how our specific calling personally will fit dito sa big picture ng ginagawa mo, I pray that you will show that to us. For some of us, you call us to advance your kingdom in in our families, in our offices, at kung paano kami mag-make disciple. For some of us, Lord, even parang anlayo, makakareach pa ba kami ng next generation, but you are calling us to do this. Therefore, you are empowering us to do this. Salamat God for this privilege. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Palakpakan naman natin si Lord. As we close the service, let me pray a prayer of blessing for all of you. Sa mga nanonood ngayon, yan, we are closing our service right now. Kaya ba natin ipan yung camera para makita din sila yan? Yan, yan. Tingnan nyo, tingnan nyo. Yan, yung mga kapatid nyo na nandito ngayon. Lord, thank you for this Sunday na nakabalik na po kami dito. I pray, Lord, na tuloy-tuloy na. Lord, we declare na, and Lord, thank you na bumababa na po yung cases ng coronavirus sa buong nation. Nakikita na rin namin, even in our city, dahan-dahan bumababa na. Lord, right now, we declare with our collective prayer, with our collective faith, we declare that coronavirus has no power against us, Lord. And right now, we declare coronavirus be gone in the name of Jesus. And Lord, heal our land, heal our city, heal our nation. And Lord, lastly, I pray for protection for everyone. Both from external attack like coronavirus and internal attack like depression, anxiety. Tanggalin mo, Panginoon, sa amin. Protectionan mo kami. And for those of us na dumadaan kami sa gitna ng pagsubok ngayon, I pray that you would strengthen us. You would remind us that we are not walking alone. We are with you, you are with us, and we have each other. Huwag mo kami hayaan, Panginoon, na ma-isolate. Remind us again of how important it is to be part of community. Thank you, God, for this privilege. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn His face towards you and give you Peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you for coming sa ating worship service. See you again next week sa mga nanonood po ngayon. Thank you for watching our online service. See you again next week. And sa mga hindi pa, meron po tayong Zoom service mamayang hapon. So thank you everyone for coming. God bless you. between mga likha sa daigdig sa simulat hanggang wakas ikaw ang sandigan hinugis na